Okay, hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about powers and exponents. So, first thing, what is a power? A power is a problem with repeated multiplication. So, repeated multiplication, that would be something like uh, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. That's repeated multiplication. So, that we can write that like this, and we read that as 2 to the 4th power, because we took 2 and we multiplied it by itself 4 times. Okay, a power has a base and an exponent. So, 3 to the 4th power is a power... Okay, the three is the base. Notice the base, the base, the base, it's all green. Okay, and then uh, the power, four, is that's the exponent. Okay, all of that is in red. So three to the fourth power is a power. That's, that's your power. And three is the base, and four is the exponent. You need to know that. Three to the fourth power means three times three times three times three. And you always read this as three to the fourth power here. Okay, now oftentimes you get, uh, <clears throat> you read this as 3 to the second power, okay, or sometimes it's called 3 squared. The reason it's called 3 squared is because when it means 3 by 3, it actually forms, there's 3 on this side, there's 3 on this side, it forms a, a, a perfect square. Okay, so 4 squared would be the same thing, except it would have a, another row on each side of here. Okay, they always form a nice square. 2 squared would look like this. It would be 2 by 2, and so that's why we call it squared. Now, here we have 3 to the 3rd power. <clears throat> that's called 3 cubed. Okay, and the reason that it's called 3 cubed is because you have something that looks like this. Instead of a square, you can form a cube, and it looks like this. Okay, you've got three on this side, three on this side, and three on this side, and it forms a cube, okay? Okay, so, um, after that, after after three, you know, it's just three to the fourth power, three to the fifth power, and so on. Okay, so write the following products as a power. So we got four times four times four times four times four. Okay, we call this four to the fifth power because there's we're going to multiply four by itself five times. Okay, now I want you to go ahead and pause this real quick, and I want you to do this problem right here. Write that as a power. I'll let you pause that and then click back on here. Okay, 12 times 12 times 12, that would be 12 to the third power. So hopefully you got that right. Okay, now I want you to go ahead and uh, pause your video and do these two problems. So we have 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6, and we have 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. I'll give you a second, pause the video, and give those a try, and see, jump back on here, and then compare to what I got. Okay, so since we have six sixes here, we're going to write this as six to the sixth power. And this one we have four tens, so that's going to be ten to the fourth power. So hopefully you got both of those right. Okay, now it says find the value of each power. Finding the value means find out what it what is that worth? What is that number? So seven squared or seven to the second power. Remember, that means 7 times 7, that's just 49. Okay. 5 to the 3rd power. Why don't you go ahead and pause this real quick, see if you can figure out 5 to the 3rd power, and then uh, unpause this and take a look and see what you got. Okay, so you should have got 5 times 5 
times 5. So 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 is 125. Now, if you were using a calculator uh, to do this, you're going to look for your power key is going to be, it's going to look something like this. It might say x to the y, like this. Okay. Or you might see a power key, depending on your calculator, it might look like this. So you'd go 5, and you'd push this key, and 3, and then you'd hit equals, and it would say 125. Or you could go 5, push your x to the y key, push in 3, push equals, and it's also going to tell you 125. Okay, a perfect square. So we kind of talked about this a little bit. A perfect square is the square of a whole number. So let's list the first 12 perfect squares. So these numbers are going to be uh, 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared. All the way up to 12 squared. Okay, so uh, 1 squared is just 1. Uh, 2 squared is 4. 3 squared, 3 times 3, that's 9. 4 times 4 is 16, 25, 6 times 6 is 36, 7 times 7 is 49, 8 times 8 is 64, 9 times 9 is 81, 10 times 10 is 100, 11 times 11 is 121, and 12 times 12 is 144. Now this just keeps on going, but these are your perfect squares. Okay. So basically what that means is you can make a perfect square out of each one of these, so it's real easy with 1. And 4, you can do the 2 by 2 thing. Gets a little big real quick to actually draw, but you can get the idea. There's 3 squared and so on. So why is 20 not a perfect square? Well, there's a couple reasons. One, there is no number, no whole number that you can write that when you multiply it by itself is 20. So if you look here, 4 squared is 16, but 5 squared is 25. It skips all the numbers between 16 and 25. Okay. The other way to think about it is there's no way to take 20 squares and arrange them to get a perfect square. So you can do, you know, if we started out with... Uh, That's not a very good drawing right there, is it? Let's try that again. So there's 4 squared. Um, but that means there's 16, there's 16 squares here. That means I have 4 more squares. Okay, there's no way I can put them on here. I go 1, 2, 3... Four, I can make a rectangle, but I can't make a square out of it. Okay, so there's no perfect square. There's no there's no way to take 20 squares of the same size and make them into a square. That's why it's not a perfect square. <clears throat> okay, a monopoly board is a square with a side length of 20 inches. What is the area of the board? Okay, so remember, area is how much stuff is inside here. How many squares? of the same size can I fit inside that shape? Okay, and this is 20 by 20. So I'm going to do the problem 20 squared. Okay, remember that's 20 times 20. And that's 400. So this has an area of 400 square inches. Okay, now notice you write it as inches squared. You don't write it like this. Okay, this would be wrong. Even though you read that, you want to go, oh, 400 square inches. No, nope, that's not what that means. It's the inches that are squared, not the number. See, this says 400 squared. Well, that's uh, 16,000. Okay. 
this would be 16,000 of these where this was one inch long. This is 400 of these where that's one inch by one inch. Okay, so there's a big difference there. Okay, so be really mindful of that, that you don't write it like that. You can write it like this if you prefer. Oops. You can write it as 400 square inches like that. You always need to label it, though, uh, the units. Okay? So what is the area of the stop sign here? You can see this is 24 inches by 24 inches, and that's a square. It's just tilted on its side. So I'll give you a second to pause the video here, figure that out, and then jump back on here. Okay, so this would be uh, 24 squared, like that, which is 24 by 24. And, of course, everybody knows that that's 576, right, square inches. You can multiply that out if you like to. Use a calculator, um, but you should get 576 square inches. Okay, and here is your assignment. Uh, there's page one of your assignment right here, and page two of your assignment right here. Now you're just gonna do one through 43, the odd problems only. So one, three, five, seven, nine, 11, and so on. Don't do the even ones, okay? So if you have any questions, I will see you in class.